So, uh, let me introduce myself. I am uh, Kasturba, Associate Professor in the Department of Architecture. My main uh, subject is Building Technology. Like I did my post-graduation and a PhD and further studies in Building Technology. So, this is one of the paper. Uh, you know, construction sector is the one of the largest sector which utilizes energy. It is about 70% of the total energy is utilized in building sector. With the ever increasing demand for the housing or buildings with the development uh, of infrastructure, we know the whole uh, world is facing problem with the, whether it is environment or energy uh, conservation. So, this is uh, this is about the management of building waste. Building waste is uh, construction demolition waste, mainly for sustainable construction. That is sustainable construction uh, should it is more concerned for the future than for the present. Like we have to reserve something uh, for the future. And the using an energy conservation initiative uh, using renewable technology. So. We are doing some research uh, on uh, making some uh, renewable or recycled materials for basin. One of my research scholars is working on that. But for this particular presentation, I have not included that. This is it's a brief uh, introduction for, because I was doing a postdoctoral, uh, I was on a postdoctoral visit to US, that is UIC. Uh, Illinois and Chicago, that time I made this paper because that professor who, under whom I did this uh, postdoctoral visit, he was working on this. That's the time when I got in, uh, more interest in this. So, some basic observations which I made in developing countries, which we can, which the developed countries can follow, is given in a small nutshell. I did not include any of my research papers or uh, research works or anything. It's only a brief. So I hope you all will get interested in So my outline of presentation is introduction, something about the building waste and how uh, it's estimate. Then uh, sustainable construction, uh, the principles, waste recycling and management with a few case studies which uh, I found and conclusions. So waste is any unwanted or undesirable material. But uh, we are only concentrating on the construction and demolition waste because we have got bio waste, uh, e waste, anything else. But, uh, it is uh, it is an unavoidable byproduct of human activity. Uh, for any uh, place, uh, you will have waste, and there is a product, there is a waste product also. So uh, we are concentrating only on building waste produced in the process of construction, remodeling, repair, or demolition of buildings. Maybe due to different reasons, whether it is uh, natural disasters, you get a debris of waste. Uh, um, or uh, every time, uh, like any, any type of repair is going on, you have a lot of waste. Even in, for the new construction in developing countries, not, I should not say it is developing countries, because uh, in Africa I found they use the resource very carefully. They are not doing much waste. But if you go to any construction site in India, we can see the they are uh, using a uh, lot of material and many uh, percentage is going for the waste also. So there they are very carefully utilizing the resources with a concern for the environment. So for sustainable construction, the basic principles we follow are uh, that is 3R and 3E, which you must have heard, that is to reduce, recycle, uh, so reduce, reuse and uh, recycle. So wherever we can reduce or optimize, we have to optimize. Now we can see that is going on in the construction of buildings, like uh, we are not using much of uh, RCC, uh, reinforced cement concrete, because uh, there it involves a lot of uh, resources. And once it becomes waste, it is very difficult even to throw it to the environment. Whereas if you are using steel structures, there are many other advantages, even though the capital cost or energy is high in manufacture of steel, but it is reusable. Like uh, at any say, uh, time you want to demolish the building, 
that product is reusable or we can uh, it has got resale value whereas concrete you have to employ somebody to dump it somewhere that is causing again problem for the environment as landfill or to utilize also we don't have that much of uh, uh, what you call uh, principles in our country uh, so now we are working on recycling of waste one of my research scholar is doing that because we don't have um, enough uh, natural resources for the masonry. Whatever we are using is getting depleted at a very fast rate. You know about the sand or the natural stone uh, or um, RCC. So we are uh, trying to uh, standardize some product using waste, whether it is any type of waste. Uh, I could say. The, so the other advantage is economy, of course, uh, energy efficiency and environment protection. So it is a triple benefit. It, uh, like if we are doing this, it is mainly to protect the environment because otherwise waste will again go to the environment that it will spoil the environment. Energy efficiency, uh, see by using the uh, like uh, new raw materials again, uh, we have to manufacture like cement. How much energy is involved in one uh, bag of cement, it has to burn a lot. If you go to those places, where the cement manufacture is going on, you can see huge silos emitting a lot of carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, we are not aware about that. Even in steel industry, not, uh, like uh, those places, uh, the, whether it is the workers or the supporting society, they are undergoing a lot of difficulties just to produce this uh, uh, cement and ACP panels. Uh, nowadays, everybody is planning the building using ACP panels. It is a high en energy material. Economy is a uh, also involved. So sustainable construction is uh, for economy, energy saving, environment protection and the principle is to reduce not only uh, this only water, uh, we have to use whatever is the resource nearby. Uh, like uh, you know the water problem is going to be attacking this year in a very high rate. So we have to go, even in the campus we have to go for uh, rainwater harvesting or uh, some other method of reducing the water. So even uh, one of my students, uh, sorry this is out of context, they are trying to uh, make water from the atmosphere, drinking water. They are selling for uh, 2 rupees per liter. Because we our humidity is about uh, for about 70 percent uh, and uh, we need only about 50 percent humidity for ordinary life. So they are trying to take water from the air and uh, they started their startup uh, in Bangalore yesterday he came because he was having a meeting. He's just uh, passed out uh, one year back. Uh, they as a team were involved in mechanical and uh, electrical engineering students. They did not get any support from the government. They consulted some advertising agencies so that they can make a tap on one side and another side an advertisement so that they will get the money on their own. So, and it is being installed in some schools in Karnataka and now they want to install in Calicut. Maybe I hope our campus, they will install two or three pipes like that so that at least they get the water from the atmosphere. It is from the humidity. They are condensing, condensation. This is not in this context, but I felt it is for our sustainable environment we have to do something. So regarding my topic, that is a building base, it consists of uh, concrete, bricks, timber, sanitary ware, glasses, steel and plastic. How much can be reused, we have to see. And uh, we have to, uh, we have the industry. So this is a study done by a group, uh, Professor S.K. Bhattacharya and et al. Uh, in India, where they have arrived the, the, based on the weight. Uh, that is uh, concrete is having 65 percent. Uh, they did a scientific study and 25 percent uh, masonry brick and tile, 5 percent is wood, metals 2 percent and uh, plastic 1 percent, uh, others 2 percent. So this is uh, like uh, yeah, we have to see how it can be utilized. So um, the construction and demolition waste generated in many uh, places like uh, due to the demolition of old buildings, then concrete pavements, bridges and other structures, mostly we throw away this waste. It is not properly uh, managed in our country. 
due to even the old buildings uh, after 15 years like uh, uh, they need to be either strengthened or demolished that is the present uh, rule so we have to find out how we have to recycle this waste and uh, main uh, thing is uh, natural disasters we can see natural disaster whether it is uh, flood or uh, earthquake mainly because earthquake mainly it is the building which is getting uh, problem uh, buildings are killing the people not the uh, earthquake so the buildings will be in the form of a rubble after the earthquake uh, so um, uh, cyclone uh, UK, uh, recently there were a lot of uh, cyclones where part of the building or even the buildings were uh, transformed into debris. So this is the main, main uh, waste management. We have to prevent uh, the waste, minimize it, uh, then uh, reuse wherever possible, then recycle and uh, the last option is the disposal. That is it goes to the land as a, and it causes uh, groundwater pollution or even uh, several other hazards. So this is the favored option is uh, Try to optimize the materials, then uh, minimize whatever is required only you have to use. Because I, I, this I found in Africa when I went to Burkina Faso, and they are very careful in, in using the natural resources. They use very optimal. I mean, whatever is necessary only they will use. They will not use uh, the roof. Uh, and the one I saw one school was constructed using the school children and their parents. Uh, like using soil cement blocks in the site itself, minimum cement. Uh, even though they have laterite, they they had to uh, give lot of energy to cut it and uh, build it also. So they were using sieved sand and the soil cement block there itself they press it. And the children could build and only some sort of welding and this one for the truss, roof truss. That is small scale industry where they can give a welding machine and they constructed it. Uh, only the architect gave direction. So even in Vaina, uh, when there is a uh, housing scheme introduced by the government, uh, in the tribal area, they were uh, importing uh, the cement and uh, all these materials from this area uh, to that hilly area and they finally uh, they were employing uh, contractors who take almost 60% of the money into their pocket and finally they get a concrete house. Uh, but the, that concrete house also they are not happy. I found that they tie the cattle inside the concrete house. Again, they want to live in that. Uh, in Atapadi, that will happen. They didn't want uh, that kind of uh, houses. And uh, because the, for them, the routine, they were suited to that other way. Not even concept. So, uh, I was very, uh, uh, I felt very sad uh, when I visited the recent week. There was no tribal house to be studied, to be shown to our students. So some of the nodes of tourist attraction like uh, Padinyar, the, 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 the dam site, Pukkot Lake, all this, they constructed uh, plastic uh, sheds, like uh, using polymer material or uh, some high energy material. Whereas in Burkina Faso, the tribal area where I visited, there was a place where they, uh, the tribal art was uh, pro given promotion and they could, like that was a tourist node. And the style of the houses and huts which they made was a tribal house. That is also a government project in Africa. And it remind uh, that it is poor than India. Like uh, they don't have that much economy. And uh, there we can eat the food, the, the tribal food. Uh, here uh, again they will sell uh, water, kurkure, all these things in the tribal area. Uh, all lace, uh, all these things. In, uh, even when we go, not uh, any local food product or anything. This is uh, and uh, no construction in these uh, government projects. They use this tribal technology. At least they use the material from the nearby places and construct. And uh, they, what we were suggesting is uh, to uh, when a government employ a housing scheme, they should utilize the manpower of that uh, tribals to build their house. So that they will be serious. Otherwise, uh, this uh, whatever schemes the government is giving, they are just uh, sleeping or they they will get everything free. They are not studying. They are not doing any work. Earlier, uh, these tribals they were working uh, to earn some income. Now they are made useless by the government. They know they will get houses. Only thing what they do is they just uh, whatever money they get, they just uh, spoil by drinking and all that. No, they don't even work because they get house. They get everything. 
mean, whichever politician comes, they give lot of money uh, to that place. I am talking about this, uh, like some uh, technology should be given so that they will be also involved in the construction. So recycling the building materials, the main benefit is uh, energy conservation, reduce the need to extract in new raw materials, processing, manufacturing, transportation, construction and disposal at the end of building's useful life. The environment conservation, of course, the waste will go to the environment as uh, it reduces pollutants and uh, produ production of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, then economy, it conserves land spill space. Mostly in any municipality you can see some of the places where they dump the waste. And uh, even the people, uh, they doesn't like to live in that area. Here you can see there is a place called, uh, what is that place? Velapil uh, Shala in Trivandrum. Another one in Calicut, I forgot the name. Uh, it is uh, near city only. There are even uh, people only, they say that the community, they made it isolated. And uh, somewhere if they want to uh, do a new landfill, the people will start striking, not in our area, in some other area. They can't, uh, uh, they object. And now government has to give lot of money for the area to, uh, even to do the sorting and all that. Whereas in developed countries, they have even, every municipality, they have identified place in case there is any natural disaster, like hurricane or earthquake, they may they have to dump the waste and how to sort it out, what can be recycled, it is there. It's also a part of uh, the disaster mitigation. So you can see all. Right? Okay, uh, so these equipments were purchased in every municipality. Like uh, one is the bar screening, magnetic separation, air classifier where they can in concrete crushing and uh, uh, these are the equipments which we have to install in every municipality so that in case uh, there is any disaster where the yard uh, where they can install this. These, if they do these uh, basic things then it can be done in every way. So the, I just uh, thought of uh, taking some things from India which I felt which was very good. You know, the city of Chandigarh is the only city which was planned. Before that, it was only an industry, industrial city. And uh, I had more photographs, I had only taken two. There were a lot of waste from the industry. Like once they had to swipe people, like uh, remove everything. But there was a person uh, who was working in that municipality who started reusing this waste. Because it was only a one-man show. And earlier he got lot of opposition also because he was trying to convert this waste into garden. And his name is ne Nebu Chant. Uh, yeah, yeah, some Nebu Chant I remember. Uh, he died uh, recently only, but uh, it was a one man. But later uh, he was doing it silently. But uh, later people uh, gave him recognition and. Uh, Every waste, like in, you can see only from the waste he has constructed lot of things, so even this is another view. And uh, now it is a big tourist destination, it is called Rock Garden of Chandigarh, around Sukhna Lake. Uh, it is beautifully built, how he has converted that yard of uh, industrial waste into a beautiful um, this one, like garden or park. And this is a project which I did in Kakori Panchayat. Uh, it is a nearby and uh, he was funded by TechUp. And uh, this research was done by civil engineering department and they constructed and they just went off. But uh, it has to be implemented to the uh, common public. Nobody could know. See, we do a lot of research in the laboratories, but then we forget how to promote it and go to the common man. It is very important. So, when I took the, uh, this, uh, like, uh, the TechUp project was available, I implemented this project through Kudumbas way, which was very efficient in Kerala. Like ladies uh, who were working and they do in different enterprises. So I approached the panchayat and they told, okay, you can train the ladies. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, the ladies were not trained in masonry or uh, like plastic. So we employed only one mason so that he could do plastering. But we collected the waste, uh, agriculture waste, that is coconut uh, shell. And then uh, using winding wire, we made like a garland. And uh, see, uh, for the cattle shed, then for the, what is that, uh, poultry, they construct M60 concrete. 
for the power uh, this one like um, uh, for the power tree uh, the cattle shed and all that whereas when i went to us i found uh, all the farm houses are made from palm waste like uh, corn corn waste they add the concrete and then uh, they use the, that material to construct the uh, farm house in africa also the the pig uh, stable uh, all this they use uh, lean concrete adding whatever resource they have at least they need not uh, take it to uh, no, truck and dump it in another yard or burn it again it will cost money so they use it along with this concrete uh, my uh, research scholar when he uh, first joined he told he wanted to utilize that uh, what is that that dredged material from cochin uh, port which um, government is spending lakhs of rupees to dump it then uh, we came to know that uh, already the government uh, kipco has done a research and found uh, written a given a report that this product is unsuitable for any construction activity but uh, he found some papers done in other countries where they have utilized this dredged waste into making tiles and all that see this report is manipulated actually why because uh, they want the dumping money you know it goes to the pocket of these people uh, tons of uh, this one was uh, even uh, see that is how they are doing uh, even uh, when we went to guruvayu my students did they study the powder in anapandi they were uh, spending a lot of money to dump uh, to uh, dispose it nobody wants it it's not even manure i don't know but it is uh, and lot of fiber this cow this elephants eat lot of uh, this one quantity of fibers and uh, that can be utilized for uh, in sri lanka they utilize for paper making but that also they were not happy to suggest to implement the only thing that machinery has to be brought here but that they are not willing because they don't get money uh, to dispose this waste yeah. see these are the things which are happening even to uh, convert to that uh, what is that uh, uh, fire wood kitchen to gas kitchen because i do some renovation project they are not feeling because some people will lose the job they will say something else they will say god is not happy to convert that firewood uh, to gas uh, so we did it all this things and uh, we found like that pioneering in that but i convert uh, gas kitchen in tani uh, temple in uh, all this i told no more environmental pollution we should do something which is positive or biogas also so this project is sorry this i am implementing uh, see for this water can be reused uh, you see uh, some are direct gs ready at that time they are inspecting this you see first they feed it with that form work you know that only that one is uh, like we can construct it for 5000 rupees and all and involve the people uh, that form work is a capital investment only thing these ladies has to those who want to uh, like make cow farm one or two cows they can uh, do this uh, and uh, first uh, they have to collect the coconut shell then do this then welded mesh cover uh, if you want a clean ceiling you can use that welded mesh and chicken mesh and then one plastic only otherwise they use the m60 concrete with uh, all the reinforcement and uh, uh, here it is cool for the cows also Uh, and uh, they can repeat this using the formwork by kudumbasri but this was not very successful uh, uh, because uh, those ladies were not very interested we along with that we uh, found out what they require tailor in unit so even for that we uh, bought uh, some uh, what we call them, that motor driven tailor so that they can start some industry that was the purpose of that project that became successful Uh, because they could uh, do that lady this would be, this uh, they have uh, till now uh, it is in good condition that uh, said uh, it is in good condition very cool uh, and now i have proposed this for yoga center they have a small structure nearby so they told okay we can implement that only thing it is a little bit laborious at the form you know that is more and this is uh, just to show you this was a cd they constructed a house Uh, like uh, this is in the campus itself see sometimes to mount a water tank you know either you have to give a steel support uh, for a poor uh, family 
they they can use this plastic bottle, fill it with sand, seal it uh, in them, and it is it is carrying good weight also. Like a little mortar is required. Otherwise, it is uh, like it's only in a local small scale for landscape and all that. So these are. This one I did when I was HOD in the Department of Architecture. The students, uh, the creativity, they, there were a lot of uh, cement cubes and uh, cubes and cylinders and uh, broken beams in the strength of material lab. And uh, I told them to make some sculpture of artistic value. They designed the sculpture. I employed only one mason, bought uh, about six or seven bags of cement. First of all, is uh, only waste material. And the students uh, made uh, that uh, work, and then the painting was done by another batch. That was another cost. They all of my students were oh, only one mason who could uh, be guided for the furrow cement. They did uh, pla uh, like only for the mortar and plaster. So, yeah, this is case studies. So this is uh, this part is I have six slides which shows how in US, uh, like I was just observing what they are doing. So, see they only construct uh, this basement uh, made out of concrete, uh, rest all is uh, timber. But I am not showing that. That is an industrial manufacture, but mostly I have seen they use even recycled timber and make it a cement board. Cement board under the shingles. They have the shingles as roof, but they use uh, not plywood actually or not uh, uh, asbestos. But it, there is another one called cement board. They use this fiber uh, timber and then uh, like they uh, cut it and in the industry they crush it and then uh, cement slurry. They make it for compound walls or whatever. They reuse material in a big way. So uh, some of the things I will show you. So this is the one when you go to downtown of Chicago, uh, near that you can see a big yard. I was just observing what is going on there. See, uh, uh, their roads is not like this. After every winter, no, it will rut. Uh, there will be cracks and uh, this one. So, uh, and they do the way. They just scoop it out. And they carry and dump it in this yard. And uh, there they crush it. And then uh, they sort it and pack it in good bags. And 40% of this is used for the relay. 40 not for, like in the relay. Uh, they 40 percent of the material is the recycled material. Whereas in India, uh, I don't know whether they scoop up, they do some relaying on top again, relaying on top like that. There it is a big problem because every after every winter, the roads will go like our monsoon. So this is a big way. If you want to buy, they are also saying they will pack and keep. Uh, that will be cheaper with subsidies by the government. They will promote. Uh, sometimes it may not be economical for them, but they promote. This is another thing which they do. Like, uh, you know, what are the things they manage? Like here, uh, this is, uh, if you want to, if you have bought a yard to construct a house, you see, they, first you have to construct a basement. Then uh, what you do, you just take the topsoil and dump it in somewhere. But uh, there, you know, they donate. Uh, like there is a process called donate. Even old clothes you can donate and a person uh, you want to buy, they can go to trip store. That's called trip store. Yeah. Uh, you can buy all the old things, reused things, but the mostly good condition things. See here we uh, just throw some of the old things which are not used properly. There they don't donate, they just have to keep it in the garage. The people will come and take. Well then, mostly they, once that thing is uh, no, like not functioning properly, they throw it off. They don't keep it in the attic or store room or anything. They just dump it. And even topsoil, you can't keep it in front of the uh, your plot. Uh, next day, the municipality will come and charge you. They will just uh, keep a bill and then stick it on a door. You can't do that. Like just by dumping away, it will cause unsightly appearance to that area. That is why. They are in the municipality, there are petrol, they will contact the inspection. Even a tree we can't plant. They, they have the trees which are to be planted in the front yard. Back yard may be some vegetables you can grow. But front, I told when I was staying with my brother, we can plant one tree in front. Don't even be charged, you can't plant it in the front. Only the tree which is uh, landscape is specified, that one should be spaced equally. 
like, like that they have planned. You can't plan in a country. Okay. So this I wanted to tell. Uh, what they do is they pack this uh, uh, topsoil. Then mulch. Mulch is uh, during winter. No, they have uh, they put uh, this insulating uh, this one like the wood is cut into small pieces and then they keep it for insulation under the trees or plants so that it the snow will not cover that it will act as an insulator. And uh, the water and sand uh, we are donated. No, we can go and buy from that shop if we are doing cultivation. We can stack it in our yard. That they does, uh, like, uh, they will donate it and then if they have to conduct some gardening or something, they go to the warehouse where the agriculture products are so, they will get back some uh, topsoil. You can't stock it, like during construction you can't keep it and keep it, because that will, again they will charge you. The municipality will come and find you. Uh, this is a demolition of lumber, reused timber. That also there is industry who will crush it and uh, as I told, in bus shelters and all, I was looking up what is this material. It is not uh, just like ours, it is uh, the uh, crushed uh, timber with the cement slurry, they make uh, that is called cement bone. Uh, not a pipe, it, will, it is good uh, resistant to the environment. This is gypsum wall bone, that also they re uh, remove and recycle uh, in the market, they for the new driver manufacturer. Again, some percentage they can add. So everything they reuse uh, because it is well sorted and uh, of course metal has got uh, resale here also. But other things we don't reuse because it is costly. Sometimes the reuse call, make it costly. But if it is manufactured in a big uh, industry and if it is standardized and if it is subsidized it becomes we have to promote, the government has to promote through subsidies, like in tribal area. We are doing a project there also in Vainat. So this is the metal. Metal, it is always, has got its value and reuse. So this is also near uh, Chicago, uh, like uh, where they are crushing the concrete, uh, demolished concrete, and they use it for paving. They use it for paving. Here, that also is not done. Paving also, I have seen they use. Uh, good quality concrete, uh, new raw materials, whereas all this crushed, uh, this one, they, that can go there, but they won't use that. They Because uh, by purchase, no, for the government project, they get some commissions, which they won't get if they use it economically. Only in the local level we do when something is demolished. That again, sometimes the strength we don't have, uh, that standardization. So we have to sell uh, after standardized uh, this one, this much strength. See, sometimes we don't need high strength things for uh, uh, small uh, landscape elements, landscape benches or something. So that can be specified and it should be promoted by government policies. So this brick may, uh, that can be used for uh, uh, aggregated drainage media and uh, general film. Then uh, this sheet thing is also a little bit of uh, reused one, that is we have got uh, non-asphalt shingles and they have uh, this one for the roof cover. Roof is very lightweight over there, whereas we have got very huge, uh, like actually concrete is not suitable for our climate. Six months it gets soaked with the rain, the next six months it is dried and it will become uh, porous and they, either they put a double roof or they again, uh, we, uh, like some form, uh, they leak ceiling, they spend a lot of money. So, uh, we should, uh, nowadays people are opting uh, lightweight roofs, using steel and this one. So, recycle material, the challenges, uh, absence of segregation of waste at source, poor source, uh, that is what I told every municipality after the earthquake and all, there should be some uh, agencies where they can have a yard and the separation equipments, lack of appropriately located uh, recycling facilities, absence of appropriate technology, then again uh, it should be quality controlled, like uh, at least the product you can have a uh, standard uh, this one, uh, so that for less strength, uh, we may require less strength for certain building application like paving etc. So that can be manufactured, if not uh, people will say that we not have strength, but uh, less strength like uh, the, the cow shed or you know, farmhouses and all, they can go for that. Cost effectiveness. Uh, then barriers is uh, yeah, same thing. Lack of awareness 
Uh, see, some people know they are told, I will not apply because they will only apply convention materials. Even if there is strength, no, I don't want to test my house uh, using that. I, uh, like I will use only. See, uh, this thing was there from the beginning. Even if uh, something new comes which is more less, it is cheaper, they will go for costly because they don't have the faith. So, that should not be there. We should be experimenting like that. Or there should be a good public education training, then additional policy rep uh, recommendation, then subsidized rate. At least the poor people, will, if they get it for subsidized, then uh, they will. Uh, uh, this one. So, standardization, specification, industrial production. So, that it is. Then, ma develop market for recycled products. Now, uh, the old things, if you want to buy, that will be only in certain portion of the uh, city. Whereas, uh, you should develop market for the whole thing, so that the way, more waste will not go to the environment. So, just like trip store, I felt, where they sell all the old things, whether it is uh, the clothing material or uh, household utensils, you have a good market and it is very crowded also. So, summary, it has been established that materials and components from demolished buildings are being reused for new construction work as well as renovation projects, especially by low-income communities in developing countries. In developing countries, most of the demolition trouble is dumped. Uh, uh, and developed world has now started to recycle into aggregate and for non-structural concrete. So, in order uh, order only the correct amount of raw materials, that is to you. Uh, during the time of construction, sorting and recycling facilities become widespread and better uh, developed. It will be easier to redirect our waste to landfill. Developing market for recycled products, then public education, training, technical assistance, then policy recommendations, promoting recycling by charitization as well as subsidies. So, the choice is used whether to recycle or use it as Plan. Thank you. You can ask any doubts or anything. It's not a very really technical because my research scholar is only working on that which I didn't put in this. We have given two or three proposals for the Vayana uh, and uh, this one. The other project which I implemented is mine. If you have any doubt, you can ask. So people are trying to use plastic for the road materials. Yes. They are trying to Yeah, pellets. It is being used. That is the only application for the plastic. Like they pelletize and they no need to uh, think much about uh, the, then it becomes waterproof to some extent. There, that is being really un in practice yeah. in India. I saw the research in the pelletization, uh, but uh, so that only a very small percentage. Also, ash from the coal based power plants. So ash has also that. Ash is now costly, you know, fly ash, no? Fly ash is not a waste product now, it is a byproduct. Because you, even for a bag of fly ash, no? Because fly ash bricks, fly ash concrete, lot of research. When I was in IIT, now it is uh, done in a big way. Fly ash is no more a waste product. In the cement industry, in uh, all other pipe industry, it is being used in a big way. It's no more a fly, uh, waste. construct a house using plastic bottles, uh, they may agree. But others, you know, they are scared whether, what about the strength? And there will be some people, because we are here, you no, know, it is more of social uh, 
this one like uh, even in tribal area i found uh, they want rcc as not for their purpose it is for the social status some people yeah they attach social status whereas uh, in abroad they are very proud i used a new technology uh, then i i is proud to live in that but here no when uh, like they will brand them as a mud house living in a mud house kacha house means uh, his uh, daughter may not get married or something like that, that much uh, this one is attaching there attaching so people also use garden for the top of their Yes, they use the garden. Yes. They have been reducing pulling wood. Yeah. I mean, what kind of... Now, because my daughter was working with this U.S. Park Department, not working, uh, like she was doing an internship, they were doing on green roofs. They are replacing this one. And Africa is a country which I respect. They are not, uh, like, they adopt. They are poor. Uh, like, the country where I visited was poor country. But how they manage the resource? I think we should learn from that. They they don't have that community cinema status at all. They down to earth. So from technical side, do you have any comment? Like what should be done? You know there is a problem. Yeah. So any suggestion like solution? Problem is with our political system. Local level, I am doing. I am doing. Like uh, even uh, uh, we have gardens. So. Uh, like uh, well, this one estate where uh, cow shed and all with low <laughs> at least uh, low uh, this one of concrete but uh, some people they construct n60 concrete actually when we are doing that reporting construction mm. we have done the studies in the in our strength of material lab and we have convinced ourselves that the strength is matching to the bricks yes 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 and that bottle we bought from the railway department very cheaply oh, yeah. and i would like to uh, I mean, I like to draw your attention. And through Narmadi right. Kentra, because the government of Kerala, they have got a wing. At least uh, it should be spread through Narmadi Kentra. They will construct uh, like pillars or something or compound walls um, uh, made out of this. Nowadays, for those even compound walls, at least their material is being optimized. They are making thin. But it is costly because it is an industrial product and they want a profit and all that. But at least we are not going for that masonry. But uh, you know, Faro Cement also has got uh, materials like high energy uh, cement is required. Uh, like uh, That is costly. But people would uh, adopt hollow bricks because it is cheaper. Uh, so everything should be like, to, to people to adopt one, it should be cheap. Then one, uh, they, uh, they want um, uh, common acceptance, all this matters. But in farmhouses, uh, in abroad, they use this raw material. Here, people are <laughs> not using. The government should subsidize it, so that that will be promoted. Like subsidizing. Mm -hmm. That is the only method. Like agriculture, what government is doing that? They have started. Like uh, agriculture, if you are prepared to do, government is giving you a lot of money, 40 percent money, they will or not to get the money and put it in the pocket. Only thing, if you uh, plant some things, you can claim, reimburse the money. That way it is good. Similarly, something, uh, uh, that is what I told them. When they are implementing houses in the tribal area, it should not, they should sit like this and uh, they, they should be also participating in the making of uh, their masonry from their own land. You'll see, from the basement they get some um, soil. Uh, Topsoil is not suitable for construction. After that they get. Uh, so that can be utilized. Uh, in the okay, Karnataka, we should learn from Karnataka. Uh, in IAC Barrow, they use CEB, that is compressed earth block. And uh, the professor I know, he was my examiner also, Professor B.B. Viraddi. Uh, what he did immediately, uh, he got the government to approve that uh, this can be used for the government project. So he, he was very successful in implementing that. You are correct. You, you are correct. But here, uh, that is uh, not uh, happening. I don't know. Uh, no, we should. We are doing research, but we are not uh, bothered about the other part to taking it to the society. And our society knows, I don't know, that is only in Kerala. So I used to tell that Kerala should be split, one part should be merged with Karnataka and another part with Tamil Nadu, so that it will be good. 
So for the forty, I don't know, with Tamil Nadu now, I don't know. Where it, when it was with Jayalalitha, it was better. I, you know, I am not discussing the political thing. Now I, I have to see that. No, here a lot of political problem. Now I know industry. Even when we make industry, there will be a lot of people to protest. Uh, like, uh, because they know, like when I told them that uh, we studied about art, when we to reuse that, they were not allowing because some people will protest it. Even if it is beneficial, they will protest. That is what. Uh, 